Hello and welcome to Unleashed. Unleashed is produced by Umbrex. You can find us at umbrex.com. That's U-M-B-R-E-X. I'm your host, Will Bachman, and I'm excited to be here today with Ulrich Riedel. Ulrich was a previous guest on the show where he talked about his unique pricing model, which is 100% at risk, very unusual. So check that out. We're going to build on that today. Uh, Ulrich's going to talk about his process of cold lead generation via LinkedIn, which I don't also don't know a ton of independent consultants that have been really successful with that. So I'm excited to hear how Ulrich goes about it. Ulrich, welcome to the show. Well, thanks so much and happy to be here. Really great. Yeah, so, I mean, cold lead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah so, so, so just tell us how you do it, right? So uh, walk us through your process. Uh, you told us in the previous episode how you you know, use LinkedIn to help find these project groups have to be, you know, fit a very narrow set of criteria. So what, tell us about your process. Yeah. Um, maybe before I start with the process itself, I, I give a bit of background. So um, why, first, I thought it's it's insane to do something like that. And I I, I hesitated for, for a long period of time to, uh, to do cold reach out in general and specifically on LinkedIn. Um, however, I, I realized for my very specific offer, I need a very specific set of, of leads and, and prospects, and um, I, I, I won't find them otherwise, number one. Number two, what is the downside? And that's an important thing. The downside I see is close to zero in the sense of if you do it right, you can't damage your reputation. You, don't, you wouldn't have met those, those individuals um, in most cases anyhow. So there's a lot of upsides limited downside and I believe my experiences can work. So to make it work, I see a couple of um, of aspects and I would like to list them first and then um, will you shoot at me whatever you would like to shoot at. Um, number one is my number one advice is respect your leads. Yeah, um, you do something, we do something if we do that, um, which is which which is close to spamming. And it must not be spam, is my deep belief. People, uh, I always have this idea, if you do something at 90% in this kind of, of activity, you don't achieve anything. If you need the 95 or 100% um, or, or you just lose everyone. And, you, and, and re respecting your lead is a, is a major component of that. This must not be a marketing spammy thing. It must be you who is trying honestly to reach out to interesting people. So that's my number one and my maybe most important advice. Um, number two, just be aware it's expensive. Yeah, especially for your own time. Um, and also, I believe you need external help for a while and um, you need to be prepared to sustain those, uh, those, those investments, your time and cash out. Which leads to the third um, item, which is uh, I, I, it needs real expertise. Um, it needs a sales navigator. You can't do that really with a LinkedIn in, in itself. And you, you need to know how to set up uh, such a pro process. And then later, at some point, you can do it yourself. But it is a huge time investment. So if you if you can continue to, to outsource it, even better. Then, which I underestimated, I, was, I thought it was quite specific uh, who I was looking um, at um, or who I was searching for. And I realized after three months or so, um, it was not, not targeted enough. I got too many um, leads which looked good, but which weren't fitting for myself, didn't have the right personality or didn't have the right position in the right company. And, okay, wait, wait, um, okay. Yeah. say more about that. So first of all, we're talking about LinkedIn sales navigator. So yes. some of you may have a LinkedIn premium account listeners. Uh, and some listeners may have a sales navigator account. It's, you know, it's in a sort of separate module, right? Within it costs a hundred and something dollars a month, something like that allows you to do different types of searches with looking at more fields that you can do Boolean searches on. But when you say getting someone with real expertise and you were doing it on your own, but you weren't doing it right. Tell us about what specifically an expert helped you do differently. Was it uh, like in what way was the search more targeted? 
I, you know, tell us a little bit about what the expertise was that that helped you. Very good. So there are companies out there which which sell you calls in the end. Um, they sell you first level contacts or contacts within LinkedIn and and calls. Um, and they do everything needed to um, to to generate that. Um, you provide the words. Yeah, I mean, I would never give any wording to anyone else in, in our profession. Um, but the, the handling, I mean, we, we are talking about 9,000 leads now, which 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 uh, that company has looked for and, and saved uh, also to be sure they are not double trying it again on the same one. So they save also the bad ones. So they already had a targeted search and then they, 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 they look for the ones to approach. And that is in itself a, a lot of work and needs. And as you rightly said, the sales navigator is quite powerful to look for people, but you know how to do it. And also then once you start to contact them, you need to organize them. You can't, I mean, sales navigator is horrible in terms of CRM module and, and we are doing CRM here kind of in, in a way and at least a very early stage. And um, and you need a lot of tricks to still make it work in a good way. You, I mean, creating um, groups and, and uh, multiple groups. I have one group, do I contact the person in German, in Swiss German or in English? Yeah stuff like that but i don't every single time have to look in which uh, university that person was was being where uh, that person was born and so on and there so you can have you can't tag it in a normal natural way you need to find tricks and then you need the process itself um to uh, to send out the connection to uh, to track it once it gets back to uh, you only have 300 characters to to invite someone as you may know uh, once the person accepts you want to send the person a longer um, a text, you may want to um, personalize that text to that person or not. Uh, and then that person may engage. And then what that company would do is to, to set up a call. They are in your LinkedIn, they are in your Calendly, and they will set up a call in your calendar with that, with that prospect. And that's when they would leave um, um, that 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 contact, then it's yours, and you are handling it hundred mm percent. -hmm. So they do quite a bit, and it's possible to do it yourself. But it's but but I would not have known how to. I didn't start myself. I started with the experts. Um, I just I, I I didn't answer to the experts precisely what I wanted. I thought I did the profile of my of my um, of my leads. I just fell into the same trap. I think some fall in LinkedIn. You, or you always want to be a bit broad or just a bit broad or not just in case. And in LinkedIn, it kills you. With 800 million or whatever um, people, it, it just kills you. You need to be super targeted, super restrictive, uh, aware that you will lose a lot of uh, good potential uh, prospects, but you can't handle the, the amount anyhow. And so um, you, you must have, my, my learning, you must avoid getting um, contacts, which in the end you don't, wouldn't like to have as, um, as clients, maybe right. as compromised client, but, but not really. So it sounds like your initial reach out is you're sending a connection request. Can you talk to us about what language you use in the connection request and maybe how that's evolved over time? Um, and how you've iterated to to find what is working for you today? Oh, very good. Yes. Um, so at the beginning, it was soft and different, and it worked, uh, but for probably not for the right personality. And then I got to the point. My 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 uh, the profile of my my uh, um, prospects is is very specific senior vice presidents upwards in companies with 3 billion dollar industrial companies of 3 billion dollar upwards in germany switzerland austria so um and and with those kind of people let's say they all make at least half a million a year they they don't have time they don't answer this kind of things they get 20 a day of that so it needs to be crystal clear so what i now do in english is um originally um, is uh, dear John, you are responsible for large complex projects and strategies. I reduce your implementation risk and increase the intrinsic project value. 
by 8 to 15%, which is 20 to $600 million NPV. I do this since 2004. I'd love to explain how I would achieve this for you. Best regards, Ulrich. And now I contacted them, and this is now going into the... I did something quite daring. People told me I shouldn't do it. I contacted them a second time, three months later, the ones who didn't answer. And I say, uh, and the second time I said, let me try the unthinkable, John, and invite you again. Why? Your large complex projects deserve better implementation. I improve the implementation, risk down, value up, 8 to 15% more value, 20 to 600 million NPV. Since 2004, 100% success and value-based. Let's talk. Warm regards, Ulrich. Wow. And it works. So, so yeah. you're keeping track. So you send a connection request. And if they don't accept it, you need to go into LinkedIn and sort of delete or withdraw. I guess it's withdraw that connection request. And then you're keeping track of it. And you have some kind of you know, flag for yourself so that three months later, you'll send them another connection request You know the way you described. What system are you using to, to track all that? Are you using like a CRM system? If so, which one? So I have my own CRM system. And um, I, I once I am in contact with someone, I move the person to my CRM system. But until that point, these 10,000 leads, which I, which I currently handle, they are all in Sales Navigator. And they are organized by lead lists. And uh, I have a couple of lead lists now. One is um, simply who of them is a first level contact um, and uh, who, uh, to whom of them have I sent out the inv invitation, who has accepted, to whom have I sent out the opener, therefore the longer text, this is now quite long, 2000 digits or so characters, to whom have I sent the follow up, which is the third step. And um, I have also done a second follow-up, which I was also advised not to do, but I did it personalized and it worked very well. Um, so a second follow-up and then I, I'm, I'm so to say, I, I give up and, and I move um, those individuals again to a different lead list in Sales Navigator with, with, with which said, um, yeah, in, in invitation send, uh, dropped out or not, not, no, 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 no response. Okay. So, so you're managing this kind of funnel type process by moving people from one lead list to another in sales navigator. Yeah. It's several lead lists. Exactly. So they all have four, five, six um, ticks or, or uh, it, on different lead lists at the same time to make clear uh, what, what they are, who they are. Interesting. One is a language. One is a language, as I said, but um, the other one is from which campaign I had. Uh, I changed it in between, as I as I mentioned, got more aggressive or more clear, I would say, and then depending on where they are, um, yeah, it's it's up to six different different ticks on on lead lists. Yes. Now, do you ever? Um, it sounds like you're sending people messages on LinkedIn. Do you try emailing people or calling them or texting them or anything other than LinkedIn? Uh -huh. uh, so I, I love to to move to email. Um, uh, I do that at a, at a, at the stage where we where we get into contact, yeah? and then I decide. Very often, people are very happy nowadays, apparently, to continue conversations, quite deep conversations on on LinkedIn. But whenever someone gives any sign, I move to uh, um, email. Or if I have the sense it's it's a good moment, I move to email. Mm -hmm. And I have two different program or tools to to find the email addresses because I will never write to a personal email address. And mostly in LinkedIn, you see the personal email addresses, not the business ones. Yeah. Do you mind my asking what what tools do you use to get um, work email addresses? Um, I I use Get Email and I use Rocket Reach. Rocket reach. Okay. Get email. Huh. Okay. Um, so Zoom info is obviously a big player on that. And I don't know what works well in Europe. So you find get email and rocket reach. Okay. So, so then, um, so you I mean, have they are also expensive just to, to make that clear. The, as I mentioned before, this whole thing is expensive. And also, I mean, just those two cost another 
thousand bucks or thousand five hundred bucks a year um uh, just just to, 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 to uh, let's not lose this is not an easy and light touch uh, endeavor yeah well, that's well that's actually pretty affordable zoom info is ten thousand so All right so, okay um so, okay so what are some of your tips now so you send the person a connection request and then if they accept you send them the the kind of longer message um inviting a discussion do you give people like uh some kind of calendly link so that they can schedule right in your calendar or do you ask them to provide a time what have you found works best um I love Calendly and I, I put that in. It's just a bit off-putting for some and I don't use that too early. So um, in the very first or in this long email, um, uh, what we call the, or what I call the opener, um, there's no Calendly link. There's mm -hmm. simply um, a, a respectful suggestion. Uh, let's briefly explore together whether we could be a good match. That's my sentence, whether you mm -hmm. could imagine that your large complex projects would actually be better implemented with my contribution. Definitely nice to meet you here. Warm greetings from Switzerland, um, Ulrich. Hmm. Uh, so, so not in this long message. And uh, because I, 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 I was senior manager in the past in a large organization, like I, I, I'm almost my perfect um, mm -hmm. prospect. And um, so I, I don't, the moment I see a Canadly link, it looks like a, like a marketing thing, like a spammy thing. And, ah. and that, that, that's here the balance. My my two or my my guiding uh, principle here has become: let's be hundred percent authentic. Number one, rather have a spelling mistake or so that this is real and make it as personal. Take uh, clues from the LinkedIn profiles, linked to the same university, to the same previous employer, to the cities you have lived in. Something where it's not about the link itself, which is also good. I mean, this personal link. The more important thing is the person realizes there is someone who looked into my profile and 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 sent me this message mm -hmm. and so um i i try to avoid anything which destroys that um, perception and linkedin is destroying that perception but in a follow up i do put it in yeah and and quite some people um pick it up i put in a, a, a calendly link and in um, later discussions usually yes people people write they would like to once they they are interested it's not, I haven't found it a big hurdle to, to set up a, a meeting. Uh, so it's not such a big thing. Um, it's it's not needed to hook the person in, I believe. Yeah. Whether I put it in or not, I have, uh, yeah, I don't think the, per the person who's interested is very clear they would like to talk. Right. So in that first long message, you don't say, hey, if you want to talk, grab time here. You more leave it as, would you be, you know, open to discussing this, you know? Yes, it's an invitation for me. It's an invitation to con to to start thinking together. Uh, mm. It's not um, let's have a meeting, right? And and I mean, it's so difficult. Like, these people are very senior people, and it's so difficult to who to to get them interested, and they want to see. Uh, quite a few have told me so. They appreciated the personal touch. They want to see that I take care of them, that I'm respectful of their time and, and that I, I truly believe I can add value to them, not that I get value for myself. And and that's why why I, I, I keep it very focused on let's 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 start a journey together, mm -hmm. not a LinkedIn meeting. Yeah. Uh, not a Canadian meeting. Right. And then, so they, and what's like a typical, you know, positive, like, what are some of the responses you get? Like, I imagine some of them would be saying, nice, but not, now is not the right time. Check back with me in six months. Or, or do they say, you know, interesting, but no need to chat now. Or, or they say, yeah, okay, let's discuss. What, what, what are some of the responses that you get? Very good. Um, maybe I answer that with a, with a funnel. Uh, with, with the numbers behind Great. so for uh, once once you know exactly who you want to target uh, you build the the database of thousand two thousand people you would like to target and then you send out piece by piece um, linkedin only allows something like 20 30 40 a day at some point it cuts you off for a couple of days and then you can 
the restart. So LinkedIn is not, you can't do that in a, in a, in a, in a really spammy way. So for every hundred of those invites, these short 300 digit invites, um, I get 20 to 25, now even 30 um, uh, accepted uh, connections, which I was I'm, I was told is, is really, really good for that level of, of, of people. Um, of those 20, let's call it 20, um, I, I have five which also respond in person. So not only accept it, then get the long text and then are silent, but they respond in, in, in person. And those five um, lead to one call, one video discussion. So it's 1% of the 100 targeted uh, you send out. But that's a short-term view. Now I've done this already three quarters of a year. And uh, now it, I, I, it's, I start to see the fuller picture. And the fuller picture is those 20 or the 15 who didn't respond, um, I contact again. And again, I get a quite significant portion who then start to be interested and then very often immediately want to have a call. And of the five, which only one is now really talking for exactly like you said, saying nice nice stuff, but we don't have anything right now, or I'm just leaving the position. Um, we'll start in, in, in four months time in a different company. Um, also there, um, the conversion rate continues. It's, it's the one is right now, but the other four, um, which where I was in, in contact, um, I, things start to develop all of them get into my CRM system. And um, my CRM system is built on the logic. I only want to have one. The, the, the guiding principle is when is the next interaction, my interaction, personal interaction. I don't automatize anything in, in my world. So um, when is my next interaction with that person? And then or um, what will I do then? Uh, but what is the logic of that interaction? So typical thing is uh, reconnect 3M, three months. Um, and then in brackets, um, mention new job or mention daughter being born and back to work or whatever it is. And um, and that's how I keep those alive and, and I, I develop them. And whenever they have something, they will come and they do. It's, it's only nine months for that. I realized how long these sales cycles are, um, uh, but um, it, it's it's. It's a numbers game. I mean, I have 200 people now from that exercise, which are in my CRM system. I have 50, uh, which I had video calls with. Um, and and all those 200 um, are, are reconnected. These are only the new ones. Yeah? And then I have 100 from my, from my original network. And, and I contact them every two, three, six months. And I get response yeah it, it it just takes time and it takes context funnily enough i thought bothering people is not good but if you do it in a very targeted um, sharp way and you do it always with if you have a large complex project i can help you you will get this um they are happy to see this two three times before they even contacted me once and then they come with a request for a call and and they said they admired the stubbornness or the persistence and um, and 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 are happy to then engage. They just didn't have anything before, so why should they write back? So it's a journey. This is not something you just do and you tick it off and it's done. Um, you start it and you 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 keep with it and uh, you work with it and you do it um, in a in an innovative way, uh, trying to sense what do my target audience what do they need the individual one what is this someone who who doesn't want to see me for six months uh, or is it someone who probably is happy to hear again in two months and and then the birthday uh, wishes i've never done birthday wishes in business contacts for of people i didn't know now i do and people love it i congratulate to the to job change all what you do in linkedin and that you, what you can easily find again and say as navigator and um it works I deeply believe you need a number of contacts, whatever, seven or whatever the number is, um, to get to a contract. And it just takes time to get to, to build up that trust over multiple interactions. And they don't, what I learned is people don't need to write back in order to feel that being an interaction. I send them something, it's positive for them. 
they don't have anything they don't answer but it was a contact and it, it raises a level of trust so let me see so, if i got the, the the path so you send out 100 connection requests roughly 20 of those will accept the connection request of those 20 five may reply to the, either the connection request. So 20 accept the connection request. Maybe a couple actually give you a comment, but let's say none of them do. So those 20 people, you're going to send a longer message. Of the people that you send a longer message, five will reply. And of the five that reply, one of them in the short term is going to you know schedule and have a meeting with you. The other four of those people who reply might say, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't really need to have the call now, but thanks for reaching out. Now, we have two, we have three groups. So the four people that replied, you know, that engaged with you but didn't schedule a meeting, when will you follow up with them and how do you follow up? I sent in LinkedIn uh, many, many hundred uh, new year. Uh, greetings um, to to my network and including those that was one getting back to them and funnily enough two calls a uh, two video calls came out of that only of, of that um, of that um, New Year's um, greetings um I have a logic for everything I decide every single time I, I touch a, a person say, says not now yeah. I put that person into my CRM and decide when is the next contact point already in two months or is it, was it a pretty harsh not now and, and rather in 12 months or in six months. And then I do it step by step. I, every single time I touch someone, I, I write that person a message. I have five to 10 different messages I'm sending in that circumstances and I decide what that what what could that person want to see and what what could work and i um, adjust it with name of course and with always with something else which makes it clear that i looked into the profile and it's personalized and very often it's it's really i mean i i write so much from scratch i i i, I write 50 60 70 of these real messages i write uh, from scratch every single time and so that person gets a new message um, about whatever i think it would be helpful for that person. And that's how I groom those five. And also the one, by the way, because the call itself may not lead to a project because now the person knows you and, and knows that it's interesting, but it still uh, it needs continuation of the, of the relationship. And then of the 15 where they accepted your connection request, you sent them one message, you sent them a follow-up message, no response. What, what do you do with those 15 who accepted your connection request? And now, you, so you, you know, probably have their email address. Uh, when do you contact them? Yeah. So those 15, I, I, I contacted a second time, which I was told I shouldn't do, but it worked well. I got another one or two. So the five went up to seven. Mm -hmm. And I even, and that is, was even less advised. I even went to the 80, the ones which didn't connect and I invited them again, and I got another 10. So the 20 is now 30, mm. and the 5 is now 7, and we'll probably go up to 8 or 9, and, and then it's it's finished. Then it's a closed, closed group. Okay, so, you, so the 80, you have to withdraw. Oh, by the way, are you sending connection requests from Sales Navigator, or do you go back to LinkedIn Premium and send it from regular LinkedIn? Sync uh, um, sales navigator. Uh, I know it's a bit of a hassle. It looks different. It's two different ways to capture then the responses. But if you are in two different systems, you get ripped apart and you can't uh, tag people anymore. And so uh, on. it only works if you work within the sales navigator landscape. Okay. So you send them a regular connection request from sales navigator. Um, yeah. And it's always a custom request. All right. Amazing. Um, so it sounds like you are like in addition to these new connection requests every day, you're like almost every day going in there and saying, okay, what are all my action item pop-ups from two, three, six, 12 months ago that I need to you know, follow up at different stages of people? Yeah, that's not in LinkedIn. That's in my CRM system. But yes, absolutely. I'm, that is driving my day if I can. Yeah. And if I have an, an uh, if I have a project, I, I simply don't do it. I mean, at least not in that intensity. I only do the most 
urgent things, but not the standard things. And then mm. the two months become four or six months. And I, I, I very often delay then people. It's not necessary to contact them. That was my judgment at the time. But if I don't have time, I, I simply move them two months forward. Mm. So absolutely every single day I go into my CRM and I see the list ordered by date uh, whom I should contact and in what, in what logic. And uh, it, it, can you tell us what CRM system you're using? Is this a custom built one or do you use an off the shelf, uh, you know, pipe drive or HubSpot or one of these systems? Yeah, I tried HubSpot and, and set it up and, and everything and then discussed with the person of Hub, HubSpot, an expert there. It doesn't work for me um, because it's so HubSpot works if you automize. But I, as I do, I, I love to touch my base of, of, of uh, now it's 700 priority one uh, clients in my CRM, well, in, in general, and, and the 400 or so, 300, 400 in my CRM system. I love to touch them. I want to know their names and who they are and in what context they are. And as I have a bad memory, I need to touch them again and again. So um, I have I have actually Outlook. Outlook contact. I know you don't do that and so on, but I have a cu couple of customized fields like the full update, which is the guiding principle for everything I do. And then a couple of other ones, including the next step, the text in text form, um, where it says what I should do in, in half a year's time. And then um, it's ordered by date. Very simple. I have a couple of specialized fields. So what kind of priority is that client? What language does it have? Where did I find that client? Um, what category and uh, what what CRM stage. So I also use it for the CRM stages. Zero one, first contact. Uh, zero five is the first project, active project, and so on. Um, it, it's one client. And I copy all interaction, all emails. That's my uh, virtual assistant is doing that mostly, but uh, uh, I'm copying all um, LinkedIn interaction, email interaction, my notes uh, from calls, all those are copied in the notes. So I open such a such a person and I have everything in front of me. But more importantly, it drives my work. I don't need to look at anything. I only need to look what is what date do I have today? What do I have to do today? And mm -hmm. it works pretty well. Amazing. Ulrich, if listeners want to follow up and learn more about your firm uh, or find out more about you, where would you point them online? Online, I mean, you you saw that I do a lot with LinkedIn. Best is uh, you contact me via LinkedIn. You will find my phone number there. You can always call me. Um, you will always get an answer in LinkedIn within a day or two. Um, th that would be the easiest way. I have a web page, of course, and um, but LinkedIn is is a is working very well in that regards. Amazing, Ulrich. This was very informative for me, and I'm sure listeners will be you know, find a lot that they can mine and use in their own practice. Thank you for joining today. Thank you so much, Will. Thank you.